When thinking about communities and the behavior of organisms within them, there are two main ways in which organisms can interact with each other. The first is cooperation, where different organisms benefit from interactions with each other in a community. And the second is competition, where organisms are vying for limited resources and the fittest organism typically comes out on top. In the soil, plants, insects, fungi, and bacteria are all jostling for nutrients, with each working to carve out an effective niche to call home. For microbes, communication, cooperation, and competition are frequently achieved by the sensing of their environment and by secreting different enzymes and molecules. Nutrient availability is a major determinant of microbial behavior and can frequently influence cooperation and competition decisions. On the cooperation end of things, classic examples include quorum sensing and the secretion of compounds that can be considered as public goods. Microbes can also coordinate their behavior and communicate with more distantly located organisms through the release of airborne volatile compounds. On the competition end, bacteria can directly kill each other or they can use antibiotics to inhibit the growth of others. The classical Streptomyces life cycle starts with a spore that germinates and grows through hyphotip extension and branching, forming a network of cells that penetrate into their growth substrate. This vegetative growth essentially anchors a Streptomyces colony in place, much like a plant root system. Stephanie Jones, a PhD candidate in Marie Elliott's lab at McMaster University, discovered that when you grow Streptomyces next to yeast, they opt for an entirely different mode of growth, termed exploration, that involves the cells moving and spreading away from the yeast. When Streptomyces venezuelae is inoculated by itself on a plate containing glucose, it grows vegetatively. But when it is inoculated next to yeast, you can see that the outcome is starkly different. The colony has initiated exploration and now covers the entire plate. We propose that yeast consumes glucose more rapidly than Streptomyces, and once this is depleted, Streptomyces initiate exploration. Astonishingly, explorer cells are able to traverse all sorts of surfaces, including up and over rocks. A completely unexpected aspect of exploration is that it can be communicated to more distant Streptomycetes via a volatile compound known as trimethylamine, or TMA. TMA appears to be produced at the onset of exploration, and it serves as a tool for both communication and cooperation, as well as competition. It raises the pH in the vicinity of the producing colony, and this change in pH can be recognized by more physically separated streptomycetes, signaling them to begin exploration. This pH responsive change in the behavior of streptomyces colonies is reminiscent of the fungus Candida albicans, which switches from a non-pathogenic yeast form at lower neutral pH into a pathogenic filamentous form when the pH rises. The pH-altering TMA compound produced by exploring streptomyces also has antimicrobial properties and effectively inhibits the growth of other types of bacteria. Microbial communities are highly dynamic, and there is obviously so much that we don't yet understand about what happens in their natural environments. In the case of streptomyces, we are most excited about determining the mechanistic basis for exploration, establishing the extent to which different streptomycetes are capable of exploring, understanding how TMA and high pH stimulate morphological changes in both bacteria and fungi, and revealing the volatile potential of these organisms and determining unique ways of exploiting these molecules for medical and agricultural purposes.